The Quest family gets a crash course in 2024 technology as they work to solve their time travel problem. Meanwhile, Dr. Zinn sends his robot monsters to do their worst. Can the Quest family find the parts they need to return to their own time before Dr. Zinn finds them? Let's talk about it in our review of Johnny Quest number 2 from Dynamite Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Johnny Quest number 2. I love what Dynamite is doing with this series. Whatever nostalgia juice Joe Casey is drinking, give him more of it. Because this series is a practically perfect continuation of the original cartoon. You get action, drama, and mystery wrapped around the heart of a classical science fiction story. And I love it. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened to our band of heroes in Johnny Quest number one. Johnny and his family return to Palm Key to find the island familiar, but not quite the same. After a series of startling discoveries, Dr. Quest deduced that the recent lightning storm that struck their sailboat and experimental equipment sent the crew 60 years forward in time to 2024. Old man Johnny Quest is the only one left, and his battle with Dr. Zinn continues. That brings us to the current issue. In Johnny Quest number 2, the Quest family receives a tour of the Palm Key they used to know, but is now quite different. The Underground Edition, if you will. Dr. Quest and the rest marvel at the advanced underground facility Johnny completed over the years. However, they agree to put the interests aside in favor of getting back home because the longer the Quest family remains displaced, the greater the risk of catastrophe. Without stating it outright, Joe Casey gets to the heart of what makes a classic science fiction story true science fiction. You introduce a what if, a problem that's rooted in some kind of scientific preset, in this case time travel, and the heroes roll up their sleeves to find a solution and get to work. When a writer creates that scenario wrapped in adventure and drama, now you've got a winning science fiction story on your hands. Dr. Quest explains his theory about the lightning storm and his one-of-a-kind quantum counter to Old Man Johnny, which gives the latter a clue about where to start. Using the scanning, holographic, and AI tech of the 21st century, Johnny learns the handmade components of 1964 are now easily mass-produced by the Fukunaga Company of today. The Quest family retires for the evening before setting out on their journey to Japan to get what they need. The Quest family decides to settle in for the night before they set out for Japan the next day. However, while they're resting, Dr. Zinn's holographic consciousness makes contact with one of the crashed drones on Palm Key from the first issue. The drone initiates a 3D printing protocol to create a swarm of spider-like drones that invade the Quest compound. Bandit barks when he sees something's fishy, and the swarm enters the boy's room alerting everyone in the house. Race fights the swarm, but old man Johnny quickly ends the attack with a small EMP device. Again, Joe Casey uses real science and modern tech to create a believable problem as well as a believable solution. A crash drone that uses a 3D printer to create attacking drones is a genius move. Defeating the drones with a mini EMP is just as genius. This issue is science fiction at its best. In the morning, Old Man Johnny takes the Quest family aboard the updated version of the Dragonfly for their trip to Japan, but the senior Johnny informs them about a quick stop in India. There, the Quest family finds Old Man Haji, who quickly pulls out some, let's call it, sweet fighting moves when he thinks his apartment is being invaded by intruders. Old Man Johnny asks Haji to join them, but Haji refuses. The Quest family leaves without pressing Old Man Johnny about the complex tension between the two brothers, but it's very clear that something has happened in their... I would say near past that created a rift between the two brothers. And this is what we're talking about by taking a science fiction story and wrapping it in mystery and drama. Here, Casey builds drama and curiosity that gets into your skin a little bit. Adult Haji and Johnny are not on good terms, which is a stark contrast to their familiar relationship as the best of friends. We may never know what transpired between them to damage their relationship, but we want to find out. And that's why that curiosity keeps pulling you forward. The issue concludes with talk of prophecies, mostly from the villain side of things, Dr. Zinn preparing to do his worst, which can't be good for anybody, and the land of the rising sun. Overall, Johnny Quest number two is another outstanding issue. Joe Casey maintains a spirit of action-packed adventure framed in the classical science fiction themes, and Casey drops several teases in the issue about dramatic mysteries waiting to be uncovered. If you're looking for a pitch-perfect adaptation from a classic property based on science fiction, action, and adventure, this is as good as it gets. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Sebastian Perez does an outstanding job capturing the look and feel of the source material, incorporating modern science fiction elements, such as drones and holograms, and presenting them in a sharp, clean, vivid package. Plus, we noted in the 
previous review, Lorenzo Scaramella's coloring is fantastic. Here, he does exactly the same thing. Fantastic coloring. Visually, this comic book looks like a perfect continuation of the original cartoon series. Let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture, in this case, a particular Easter egg. Readers with a sharp eye may recognize the spider-like drones. The drones are not named in this issue, but they look like exact miniature versions of the robot spy from the Johnny Quest episode of the same name, released originally on November 6th, 1964. So final thoughts, what do we think about Johnny Quest number two from Dynamite Comics? It's everything you want in a modern adaptation of a classic property. Joe Casey delivers action, mystery, and drama around the heart of a classical science fiction tale. Plus, Sebastian Perez's visuals faithfully recreate the original cartoon's aesthetic beautifully. Therefore, Johnny Quest number two earns a super, super, super well-earned 10 out of 10. I can't get over how much fun I'm having with this series, but I suspect it's because Joe Casey's tapping into those classic science fiction themes that made Star Trek and other properties so popular. But what do you think? Is this the best licensed property Dynamite has adapted so far? Leave a thumbs up if you agree and drop a comment below with which licensed characters you want Dynamite to adapt next. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, browse all the preview images of varied covers, and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.